Hey, pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Fan News. I'm Joe Burke, and this is going to be a quick video on centers getting flipped for each other as Colorado makes another trade as they flip Tyson Yost for Nico Sturm. Uh, Tyson Yost, the guy that ma mainly makes his bucks at even strength defense, isn't really used on the PK whatsoever in Colorado. We'll see if he's used on that in Minnesota. Goes to Minnesota, and Nico Sturm, the guy that has 17 points this year, in um, over 50 games, 53. But when you look at him, his play style and how at his size as a fourth line, third line center swing man at 6'3", he's able to kind of jump up and use his size on the play in the offensive zone to create plays that just don't end up uh, capitalizing into points, either on an assist or him scoring himself. He seems a little bit more demanding in the offensive zone at this point coming over um, from Clarkson University since he went into the Minnesota Wild organization. He seems a little bit more physically demanding in the offensive zone where Yost, he's not that type of player, but he's a guy that when he got drafted, you thought had more physical, you had thought had more demanding skill, I should say, in the offensive zone where at this point of his career, Tyson Yost has mostly just shown the defensive side of his equation. So to me, this was an interesting trade. It was a surprising trade when I actually looked at it because I was like, well, they're kind of just flipping two kind of Swiss Army knife centers at this point of their career, uh, where one out of Clarkson, one out of North Dakota. So, I mean, it was an odd trip, but then at the same time, I think it actually makes sense for both teams, because if you look at Colorado, they already have a guy that's smaller in Kadri at six foot. Uh, O'Connor, who can also play center, is, is only six foot. Darren Helm is only six foot, and Nathan McKinnon is fantastic and can do everything, so no matter what the hell size he is. But Kadri's a pest and a pain in the ass to play against, and is playing great. But I think they wanted to add more size. It's not like Tyson Yost adds any size for you. So I think they wanted to bring in more size there. They obviously started to have uh, Mac made, uh, Mc McDermott, I should say, Curtis McDermott, actually play forward as well. So he stepped up in tenfold, whether it's filling in on the back end or playing some forward for them um, as a big physical brute force. But I think the reason they also have had that is because other than Miko Rodden at the top of the lineup, Burakovsky's a bigger guy, but he's more of a offensively demanding bigger guy. You add in Nico Sturm, who uses his size in both zones pretty effectively. I think that fits better for a Colorado team that's trying to make a push where Sturm, kind of the style and kind of go through peopleness he has, kind of plays into the playoffs more than at this point of his young career, only 24 years old. Tyson Yost style for the Colorado Avalanche is really needed to go into the playoffs. That's why Tyson Yost was in multiple uh, trade rumors when it came to this deadline. And now he does get moved. But I also think on the flip side, Tyson Yost, just like Sturm, I think, looks really good for Colorado. Not that he didn't work. Obviously, he was a fine fourth-line center for Minnesota. But I think for Minnesota, Yost slots in very nicely. Because if you look at Freddie Goudreau, not just by the numbers, but watching him on the ice, he has 27 points this year. But he's primarily fantastic in his own zone, and then that can start to create stuff in the other zone and get him some points. That's what people are trying to get Tyson Yost to become into. Goudreau's now 28. It took him a while to be able to figure out both sides and be good at defense while doing the other end, and he just started doing it this year. So one, one Freddie Goudreau might be a very good um, mentor to Tyson Yost, and two, he might be a guy that can kind of flip-flop with each other because Yost is defensive first. So is Goudreau, where if they want a little bit more maybe skating speed from Yost on that line, they can kind of flip-flop those guys where Yost sometimes can play fourth line, and then Goudreau can sometimes play fourth line, and then the other will play second with Fiala and Boldy. But I don't necessarily see that line necessarily moving because it's worked so well with Goudreau, Boldy, and Fiala, but it's just from the scheme of how both players play. Goudreau and Yost are both defense first at this point. And then offense, where Goudreau at 28 was able to figure out the offense as a late bloomer. I think he's a guy that can really help Yost to kind of mentor him along and say, this is what I really worked at when I was very good at even strength defense like you and defense in general and cutting off lanes to be able to now apply that same uh, structure in the offensive zone to be able to become successful and be like a 27, 30 point producer. Like it looks like Goudreau is going to be into the like 30s, low 30s probably by the end of this season. But this has just been a quick video on Tyson Yost and Nico Sturm getting flipped.
and my thoughts on the trade as a whole, please continue to subscribe down below or up above on the easy-to-use widget to keep us growing to 215 by the end of March. Peace out, everybody.